Okay, Laura, whenever you're ready, we'd love to hear what you have to say. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. In 2018, I was part of the Kent Mill Synagogue Poland trip. The one thing I'd like to talk about is a visit we made to the Ramah Cemetery in the old Jewish quarter of Krakow. In that cemetery, our guide told us a story about the Tosfot Yom Tov, otherwise known as Rabbi Yom Tov Lipman Heller. He was the head of the rabbinical court in Krakow in the mid 1600s. As legend has it, the Tosfot Yom Tov was very concerned about the welfare of the poor members of the community. So every Thursday, he would personally go to the wealthy members of the community to collect charity in order to give the poor food to prepare for the Sabbath. He didn't send a messenger. He went himself because he felt that he was more trustworthy and people would give more. There was one wealthy man whose name was Yesela. He always gave just a token donation. The Tosvet Yom Tov rebuked him and said, you should be giving more. You should be giving according to your means. If you were a poor person, this would be an appropriate donation. But you're not a poor person. You're a very wealthy person. So you should give more. You can afford it. People need your money to eat. But Yesla would not give more. In fact, he said, look, if you're going to bug me about this, he probably didn't actually say that, I'm not going to give any further charity. That'll be it. I'm done. The Tosfet Yom Tov replied, well, in that case, when you die, you'll be buried in the back of the cemetery with the poor people and peasants, rather than in the front with the wealthy people and the famous rabbis. Eventually, Yesla dies. And the burial society goes to the rabbi and says, did you really mean that? That you want him to be buried in the back of the cemetery? He was a wealthy man. He should be in the front. The Tosfot Yom Tov says, yes, if you don't give charity in accords with your means, this is what happens to you. He deserves this, this result. The next Thursday, the rabbi goes out collecting charity again. And he goes to one of his regular wealthy donors who usually makes a generous donation. But today, the man gives him just a modest donation. Rabbi says to him, do you have a bad week? What happened? The man says, no, this is just normal. The rabbi presses him. And eventually the man admits, every week the person you thought was a miser would give me a large sum of money to contribute anonymously. And he made me swear not to tell anyone. The rabbi was mortified. He realized his mistake. And he tells the burial society that when he dies, he wants to be buried next to Yusla. And to this day, you see those two graves next to each other in the back of the cemetery in Krakow. The miser was actually doing something very important here. Not only was he giving according to his means, in fact, he was giving the highest form of charity there is. It's entirely anonymous. No one knew that he was giving it, and he didn't know who was receiving it. The Bible in Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 7 to 11, commands the giving of charity to the destitute. You shall not harden your heart, it says, or close your hand, lest the poor curse you. Rather, you should provide for the needs of the poor. And you should not feel bad about giving, for in return for giving, God will bless you in all your deeds and your every undertaking. There are two concepts that we want to look at here. First, the Bible commands us to take care of the poor and to provide for their needs. So that was, that's a pretty ancient idea. Secondly, the Bible recognizes that it's hard and human nature doesn't want to give. So it promises that if you do give, you'll be blessed. The Medrash Rabbah, which is a collection of rabbinical stories relating to the Bible, tells a story of a man who saw the rabbis coming to collect charity, and he hid so that he wouldn't have to give. He'd previously been wealthy, but he'd become impoverished and was embarrassed to face the rabbis. Some of us just, just don't want to give, but he was embarrassed. His wife, having more business acumen than he did, convinced him to sell half of the one field he had remaining and to give the proceeds to charity. Lo and behold, when he went to plow his remaining half field, he found buried treasure, and he turned out to be wealthier than he'd ever been before, which just illustrates the concept that the giving of charity, rather than causing someone to be poor, actually causes him to become rich because God blesses him. The Talmud in Tractate Bhava Batra discusses various topics relating to charity. At one point, the rabbis are arguing about what, what's the reward you get from giving charity? So you're getting blessed, but what's, what's the actual reward? And they, they focus in on a couple of verses in Proverbs. 
So Rabbi Chia Bar Abba says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, there's more than one verse in Proverbs that says that charity will save you from death. In one verse, it says, wealth will not help you on the day of anger and charity will save you from death. The other one says, treasures of wickedness will not help you and charity will save you from death. The Talmud explains that both verses are necessary. They're not identical because one is referring to avoiding an unnatural death in this world and the other one refers to avoiding a judgment in the world to come. The Talmud further notes that this day of anger, the first one uh, that I mentioned, equates to the day of judgment. The, the rabbis then ask, well, what type of charity saves a person from an unnatural death? And the answer they give, charity where the donor doesn't know the recipient and the recipient doesn't do know the donor. This is that same anonymous charity practiced by Yesla the miser in the story I told before. In today's world, we practice this form of charity routinely by giving to organizations like the United Way or Yad Yehuda that give, you give them the money and then they give it to poor people and we, the people don't know who each other are. So going back to the rewards for giving charity, there seems to be two ideas. One is that you'll be blessed with wealth and the other is that you'll merit some type of delay of death or avoidance of punishment or avoidance of a bad judgment. We don't really know what that means, but that's what the rabbis told us. The Bible commands us to give charity. It warns us that the failure to give charity to the poor is in itself a sin, and it states that giving charity will cause a person to be blessed. So not only does giving charity potentially lead to wealth, as we saw in the story in the Medrash, but it also atones for our sins and hopefully leads to a long life, as discussed in the Talmud. Our lesson for today is pretty clear. By helping others, by giving charity, we're also helping ourselves. In fact, it's better to give. Thank you.